So my name is Katie Mikatakis, and I work in our um, admissions and marketing office here at Thornton Academy. Um, it's my honor to welcome you here to our virtual open house featuring our STEM department. Um, so as I mentioned, we have some of our wonderful faculty. We have our director of enrollment. We have some students. We have some alumni. Um, so you're going to really get a chance to hear about the full Thornton Academy experience. Um, we're lucky this evening to have people joining us from all over the world. Um, so we have people that are um, close to home here in Saco, Maine, um, and then we have people coming to us from all across the world in lots of different countries. So we just want to give a, a big thank you to everyone uh, for taking the time to be here um, this evening in our time or whatever time it is um, in the country that you are from. Um, so a little bit about what the, the evening is going to look like. So we're going to have a presentation to begin with. You'll get to hear from our faculty, an introduction to Thornton Academy from our Director of Enrollment, Mr. Clint Williams. And then you're going to get a chance to hear from our students and our alumni. Um, at any point, if you do have a question at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see um, a question and answer Q&A box. Um, so feel free to click on that and then you can um, type in your question that you would like to have answered. We will do a full question and answer period um, at the end of the webinar tonight. Um, we do have questions that you all submitted ahead of time. So if you did already submit a question, we will get to that. Um, but you can feel free to answer, ask any question and we'll get to it um, at the end of the webinar. If you do have any problems, um, feel free to use the chat as well. So you can feel free to type anything you need to into the chat um, and we should be able to help you. Similarly, if you do encounter a problem, feel free to raise your hand. You should have that option at the bottom of your Zoom screen as well. Um, this evening, we're really going to focus on talking, uh, giving you a, an introduction to our school and then talking a lot about our STEM department, um, which is one of our stronger programs here at Thornton Academy. Um, as you know, um, the world is going through a global pandemic right now due to COVID-19. Um, we are, we'll, we may, um, you know, touch on that a little bit, um, but really uh, we are looking forward towards the future next year. Um, and so we're going to focus on sort of what a normal um, situation looks like here at Thornton Academy. Um, and similarly, there's a crazy crisis going on right now in Washington, D.C., so we're glad um, that you still have the confidence to be here with us. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to move ahead, um, you know, looking towards the future um, here in our wonderful school. So um, I think that's all the introduction that I really need to do. Again, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to start the presentation. I'm going to share my screen uh, and then... We will get going. So here we are. So thank you, welcome, and let's get going. So without further ado, not sure why this is blue, but here we go. All right, so we have Mr. Clint Williams, who's our director of enrollment. So Clint, please unmute yourself um, and, uh, and give yourself an introduction. Outstanding. All right, great. Uh, again, my name is Clint Williams. I'm the Director of Enrollment here at Thornton Academy. Welcome everybody to the virtual open house this evening featuring our STEM program. Again, I'm going to walk us through a few of the highlights of, about Thornton Academy and, and um, Katie will help me along with advancing the, the slides as we go. I'm not going to read every slide and, and every point on every slide. Certainly you can look at that while I'm highlighting some of the, uh, what I consider most important, let's say, uh, uh, of some of our facts. I mean, interestingly enough, Katie alluded to a couple of things that we're going through um, as a nation, as a world, uh, but frankly speaking, Maine is the number one most peace, peaceful state in all of the United States. And, and that's kind of an accolade that we, we value in, in any setting, in, whether we're in a pandemic or not. So uh, again, some of the really cool things are our excellent faculty, our very comprehensive course offerings of over 200 We've had over 52 countries represented from around the world attending uh, Thornton Academy, 26 AP classes, AP courses. That is an outstanding number to have if you are interested in, in really 
progressing on your academics and, and wanting to be involved in, in the highest level college or university, then Thornton Academy can absolutely help you do that. And as you can see, we have a long history of doing that for young people, uh, founded in, in 1811, based on long history, excellent traditions, and serving, co-educationally serving kids uh, from grades six through 12. And where is Thornton Academy? Most, many of you on tonight's open house meeting are from the local area, but, but we do have a fair amount of students from around the world. We're located in the Northeast corner of the United States in the state of Maine, in a, in a city, coastal city called Saco, Maine. And we're nestled on 80 acres uh, of the scenic coastal town. It's beautiful. Maine is, is otherwise known as vacation land. It's a beautiful place to live. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to work and study. And we're only 15 minutes from the biggest city in Maine, Portland, Maine, and just 90 minutes out of the historic city of Boston, Massachusetts. Our campus is a, a, an outstanding campus, actually. The, the facilities are, are many. Uh, inclusive of a, a newly renovated library. We have an outstanding state-of-the-art and new media center, television studios, theater, a 500-seat theater, engineering labs, a turf athletic stadium. Um, it's, it's, again, it's a traditional uh, boarding school, town academy model that's just in a great location. And, and it may seem a little bit big, but actually, it, it, it isn't, it doesn't feel big, it feels welcoming, it feels warm, uh, and, and it's truly a great place to be. These, these pillars are essentially pillars that we, the, these pillars, we act on these in our daily actions. These concepts inform our actions and attitudes throughout the day, week, months, and year. Uh, respect, compassion, responsibility, and investment, and and these are the, these are the things that that hold us together, if you will, and and truly our pillars. Our academics, I, I alluded to earlier, are immense. Again, two hundred upper school classes, twenty six AP classes, multiple multiple levels of English as a second language seven foreign languages and above and beyond the AP courses, we also have 40 honors courses. And as you can see in the pictures and, and some of the listings below the pics, there are some very interesting classes there as well. I mean, movie making is an example, web design, um, marine biology, digital imaging, uh, you know, it just, it's endless. It's truly endless. The, the Thornton Academy Middle School, otherwise known as TAMS, is serving uh, boys and girls from grades six through eight. And it is a private, totally private middle school of about 220 students. And, um, you know, we also serve international students. Uh, we roughly anywhere from eight to 12 students per year, but certainly we, we welcome more if it makes some sense. And, and I forgot to mention that Thornton Academy is an Apple Distinguished School, and, and we have 100% of our TAMS faculty that are uh, Apple certified. So not only do we have the outstanding technology in the use of these Apple devices, but we have the staff that is very well versed in utilizing them uh, to the best degree possible. So, uh, and again, the, 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 at the bottom, you can, you can see some of the the key points, you know, the, the close knit community, experienced teachers, um, uh, many extracurriculars, uh, many team sports, and, and TAMS is quite honestly a diamond in the rough. And uh, we're very fortunate to have that school and, and the staff that support that school and the young people that attend that school. So again, another fantastic opportunity for young people. Visual and performing arts are one of our uh, signature programs. It's, it's one of the best, if not the best in the state of Maine. 
and there are 34 art courses. Again, the theater is, is an outstanding place to practice your craft, if you will, with 500 seats. There's a four year dance program and look at all of the opportunities below the picks that are available to, to our students. And if I'm not mistaken, and um, Katie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we, we have over 70, 73 or four performances in the course of a year. So there are lots of different opportunities that kids can take advantage of and perform and, and lots of opportunities for our students to witness that and support that and enjoy that as well. Another signature program is our uh, very, very successful athletics program. Uh, Thornton Academy is, is considered in the top 1% of sports success in high schools in the nation. And, you know, we have tremendous success, obviously. So there are 57 athletic teams on our campus and the vast majority of our student body is participating in those sports. And, you know, the success goes on and on and on with over 56 state championships. And, and those statistics, that last statistic in particular, is one of the reasons why we are in the top 1%. And, and, and I don't want people out there to think that we don't have uh, other, other sport opportunities. You don't need to be the best in your craft. We have different, different levels of sports um, as you matriculate through. So don't, don't be afraid, participate, enjoy. And then if your level gets you to the varsity level, so to speak, then, then you can more than likely be involved in a very competitive, very uh, successful program. Boarding life, I mean, it doesn't get any better, frankly. If, if you live on campus, it's an exciting, it's a supportive opportunity. We've got about 180 kids on campus. Like I said earlier, 52 countries represented. And, and the 15 families that live on campus, you know, the vast majority, at least one of those members in the family are a faculty member. Um, so there are people living there to support, there to encourage in our five different dormitories. Um, and, and they do all kinds of different uh, activities on the weekends. Um, you, it, it's just a, it's an excellent opportunity and kids today value that ability to connect. Um, nurse lives on campus. There, there are again, activities, um, support. It's, it's a very familial environment that kids really enjoy. And I just want to say, you know, this next slide is, is a culmination of all the good things that happen and all the good things that we can offer as a, as a, as a boarding school and, and school in general. But look at the acceptance list. It, it's, it's diverse. It's uh, elite. It's, it's essentially um, providing opportunities for kids at, at all the different levels that we serve. And, and Katie uh, has come up with a phrase that, you know, that, that I think rings well for Thornton Academy. And folks that come to Thornton Academy, you can be who you are and you can absolutely become who you want to be and go where you want to go. So uh, hard work, support, take advantage of all the different programs and, and the sky's the limit for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clint. That was a really great introduction um, to Thornton Academy. Um, so we're going to sort of change gears here um, and, and really delve into our science department and our STEM department. Um, so we're lucky enough, we've got um, Mr. Dan Frost, who's our science department chair um, and used to be a member of the math department as well. So he's got a lot of uh, varied experiences here at Thornton Academy. Um, and then we also have um, Mrs. Terry Ehrenstam, who's one of our chemistry teachers, um, and she has been at TA for, for a while now um, and does a lot of different things um, to really support our students both in the classroom um, and then through extracurricular clubs. So um, Dan and Terry, maybe you guys can introduce yourselves and then take over. Sure, thank you, Katie. I, I'm uh, Dan Frost. I, uh, I'm a science teacher and department chair here at Thornton Academy. Terry? Um, Terry Ehrenstam. I teach chemistry. Um, this year I'm teaching honors chemistry and honors forensics chemistry. Um, and I have been at TA for um, almost 20 years now. 
Um, and then as Katie alluded to, the other thing that I do, um, not this year because of COVID, but I'm the advisor of the big community service group that we have at school, which is Interact. So I get to work with kids inside of the classroom and I get to work with them outside of the classroom as well. So uh, science at Thornton Academy, the typical progression for students is to uh, begin with physical science, which is uh, an overview of the uh, skills necessary to build uh, a foundation in science for your high school years. Uh, then a overview of chemistry and physics in the second semester is primarily earth and space sciences. From there, students will move on to biology where uh, they'll be covering life sciences and then chemistry into physics. Um, and all of these courses are offered um, at the college prep and honors and some of the foundations in the AP level as well. Uh, we've even been fortunate enough to have students like some of the ones we have with us tonight uh, come up from TAMS at the eighth grade level, level uh, some of our more advanced students to be able to access more of our diverse uh, science curriculum. So as far as the AP and elective offerings that we have, um, our AP classes include AP Biology, AP Chemistry, Physics 1 and 2 and C, AP Environmental Science and Computer Science. And in electives, we've got anything from uh, anatomy and physiology to trees in the main forest to marine biology at both the honors and the uh, college prep level uh, to various different types of engineering courses like honors to intro, intro to engineering and even honors forensics like uh, Mrs. Aaron Stan teaches. And some of the student projects that we undertake uh, include everything from uh, being able to work remotely in it with uh, 3D design and things like Google SketchUp and uh, Raspberry Pi computing, uh, computer engineering software, um, still using uh, data that were acquired from doing things like beach profiling on Camp Ellis, uh, everything from trapping live squirrels in uh, Mr. Delcourt's classes to understanding the pandemic at large. Um, you know, these projects and the, our curriculum, it's born out of a unique faculty with a diverse science experience um, with many teachers that are, are experts and specialists in their fields. Um, and we all see science and the STEM fields as a clear part of our lives now, definitely more than ever. Um, I've been lucky enough to be able to pursue field and lab techniques to the far reaches of the Arctic. Um, we've sent Mr. Jones, our marine biology teacher on research vessels with the Alvin Submersible. Um, but equally, just today, I'm sending pictures to Mr. Delcourt asking him for identification of tracks that I've found in the snow or uh, asking our AP environmental science teacher about composting ideas to uh, <laughs> asking our biology teachers about antigen mutations. We live and breathe the science and we're a, a curious bunch uh, in the inquiry based sense of the word. Um, and we definitely feel uh, it's a privilege to be able to work in these fields as well as with our students like we have here today. And Terry, could you tell us a little bit about some of like the lab spaces and the uh, uh, and some of the equipment that we work with? So I, I think it was right around five years ago, um, we opened a new STEM center at Thornton Academy and it's um, a large wing and it houses both math and science labs. And in that new facility, we have four really state-of-the-art labs, two for biology and two for chemistry. And they, they really are spectacular. Um, I hope if you, you get to come and see them, um, they, they're designed, I, I think their design equals any college or university. When the architects were designing those spaces, they actually worked with the teachers who would be working in those classrooms so that um, each one is a little bit different. Um, and each lab really fits the needs of the courses that are taught in that classroom. We, are, we also are really extremely well outfitted with equipment, um, you know, from the, you know, from what you remember from school, you know, the Bunsen burners and um, we have, you know, electronic balances. We have a lot of probe wear that the students use. Um, they can connect, they can plug those right into their iPads and so they, can get um, data digitally like temperature and pH and pressure. Um, we even have some um, spectrophotometers that connect to um, the students' iPads. So um, our, you know, our, our lab space, I think, is really spectacular. And I'm just going to tell you, I have the best classroom um, on <laughs> campus, I do believe. Um, I'm up on the second floor of the STEM Center, and I've got these huge, beautiful windows that overlook the quad. So um, we really are very fortunate to have this really great facility in which to teach in. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan and Terry. Um, and yeah, that was a really great introduction. And, and all the photos um, that you see in that last slide here um, all match up to some of the um, student projects and stuff that we've been doing. So um, it, it's really an active science community that um, takes advantage of the, the facilities and equipment that we have on campus, but aren't afraid to really go out into the field um, to, to experiment, um, which is such a part of the, the, the science uh, curriculum. So next, um, we have one of our um, middle school science teachers, Mr. Ryan Hersey, um, who is with us. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what um, science is like at TAMS and how it really sets students up for success um, when they move on to um, the upper school. So Mr. Hersey, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I am the seventh and eighth grade science teacher or a seventh and eighth grade science teacher here at Thornton Academy Middle School. Uh, this is my 15th year uh, teaching here. And about three years ago, uh, we got together, the science teachers got together in the summertime and really took a look at our curriculum uh, with the premise of how can we add more STEM uh, activities to our curriculum. Um, and when we really felt like uh, it was important to embed those STEM uh, activities into our curriculum as much as possible. So uh, we feel like we, we've done a good job of um, adding to um, our, our curriculum with, with STEM-based activities that uh, again, go around, along with our curriculums. Uh, in sixth grade, we have more of the earth science, it's more earth science based. Uh, in seventh grade, uh, we have a life science curriculum. Uh, and then in eighth grade, we have a physical science uh, curriculum. And beyond that, I, I'm also the robotics coach here, um, and, as well as the environmental um, coach as well. And um, you know, those are extra opportunities that students have that are really uh, passionate about science um, that they can get into. And, and we're even looking uh, maybe next year at, at adding a uh, computer coding class um, after school uh, as, a, as another possibility uh, for those students that are, are really passionate about science and STEM. Awesome. Cool. Well, that sounds really great. Um, all right, so we're going to switch gears here and um, hear from some of our students and alumni. So we are fortunate to have a really, really wide range of students and alumni here with us tonight. Um, so we're going to go in um, sort of age order. Um, so Chloe, uh, you remember the class of 2013. So it's been a while uh, since you were you were at TA, but can you tell us a little bit about um, what the Thornton Academy experience was like? Um, and I believe you're in dental school, so maybe you can tell us about, um, you know, how Thornton Academy really prepared you for success after um, high school. Yeah, sure. Um, it's really hard to believe that it's been almost eight years since I left Thornton Academy, but um, after that, I went and got my Bachelor's of Science from the University of New England. And I went right into dental school after that. So I'm in my fourth and final year of dental school. So I'll be graduating May, which is really exciting. Um, Thornton Academy provided me with so many opportunities um, to take science classes early on. And I think that's really where I sort of gained my interest and sort of ran with it from there. I had a lot of really great teachers. Science didn't necessarily come easy to me. So I think the support of teachers and all subjects was sort of a big deal for me to um, continue on and gain that confidence to go to college for um, a bachelor's degree in biology and then go on to dental school after that. Um, they were always more than willing to talk to me after school and provide that extra help, which really set me up for success. And um, Additionally, through Thornton Academy, I was able to attend the vocational school in Bedford, um, which was such a great program, an intro to medical sciences program that allowed me to do shadowing, learn more in depth about anatomy and physiology and connect with students from other districts to sort of foster that interest in health sciences in general. Awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, it sounds like you had a lot of varied experiences um, while you were at at, with us at Thornton Academy. So thank you so much for telling us and congratulations on your uh, near uh, 
completion of school, you must be looking forward to that. So, um, all right, we'll move on then. Um, so we've got Nick Bartholomew with us. Nick was a member of the class of 2017 and it's now working with baby bears. Is that right, Nick? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, like Katie said, I'm Nick Bartholomew. Um, when I graduated uh, from Thornton, I went on to the University of Maine in Orono to study wildlife ecology. And so currently I work as a uh, contract wildlife biologist for Maine Fish and Wildlife uh, on a few of our projects, but that's uh, including our, our bear study. So I do get the, uh, the opportunity to play with baby bears once in a while. Um, so at Thornton, um, it's been mentioned, there's a pretty uh, diverse course offering. Um, and it really gave me the chance to explore different disciplines within the science field. Um, Mrs. Aaron Stam taught the, uh, the forensic chemistry class. Uh, I believe marine biology has been mentioned. Um, Mr. Delcourt uh, teaching the forestry and wildlife biology classes really um, kind of set me on a track uh, to be doing what I am today. Um, and what's unique about Mr. Delcourt and I think the vast majority of the instructors at Thornton uh, is the passion they have for the topic. Uh, it's really things that they themselves are interested in and their passion really translated uh, to me at least uh, in getting me excited about a field that I wasn't necessarily, uh, I, I don't think I ever would have saw myself working as a, a scientist. So that, that's uh, pretty, pretty unique, I think, to Thornton. The, the vast majority of the, the teachers are really, really exceptional and excited about what they do. Um, you know, for example, taking uh, Mr. Frost's geometry class, um, he was able to work in uh, and integrate his work in, in paleoclimatology. Uh, and that was really, you know, it gave a good context um, to what we were learning and, you know, drew in a lot of uh, different concepts from, from outside the, uh, the course. Um, so yeah, uh, Thornton certainly gave me an early exposure uh, to a field I didn't know uh, would have otherwise been available or existed. Um, and it kind of, created a, a contagious passion for learning about this subject and it's helped me uh, immensely in my college and professional careers. Okay, well, thank you, Nick. That was certainly a very strong testimonial. So, um, and it sounds like you know um, Mr. Frost and Ms. Aronson pretty well. So that's neat that you guys are getting to reconnect here a little bit, so. Um, great. So we're going to move on to one of our current students. Um, Jake is uh, the, our, actually our student body president, and he's a senior this year, a member of the class of 2021. Um, he does a lot of varied things here at Thornton Academy, but um, is, is involved in some of our science classes. So Jake, you want to tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like here at TA? I would, Ms. Nikitakis. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jake. I am a senior here at TA. Um, I'm involved in many different things, but my top priority, like many of the other students here, is school and my coursework. Um, I've always taken my coursework very seriously. I've always tried to challenge myself. And um, as a kid who moved from a, another local town, Thornton Academy has definitely been a standout in the fact that they offer all of these different courses that uh, do challenge me, challenge us as students. Um, I've always been enrolled in honors and AP level courses. They've been great. Uh, this year, I get the privilege to work with uh, Miss Aaron Stam, who I love, by the way, and you will too. Uh, my little brother loves Mr. Frost. Um, just to give you a view of how things work at TA, it's, there's, a, there's a great sense of family and community. Um, like Nick was saying, Mr. Delcourt, he teaches main trees and other uh, science classes like that. He's my, uh, my club advisor for the Angler Society, which is fishing club here at uh, Thornton Academy, which is great. There's a wide variety of, uh, of clubs and other things to fit your, your own personal interests. But getting back to the, the sciences, there's a wide variety. It's been mentioned multiple times, but I've had the chance to, to dabble in computer programming my freshman year, marine biology last year, some classes I wouldn't otherwise be able to uh, 
experience if I was at another school. And then uh, respectively, the, uh, the core classes, like, you know, your chemistry, your biology, been able to challenge myself in, in those fields as well. So I definitely recommend it as a student and uh, I look forward to being an alumni very, very soon and being able to recommend it as an alumni as well. Awesome, thank you, Jake. And um, if anyone is interested, Jake just recently finished filming a really great um, virtual campus tour. Um, so you can find that on our website um, and, and get to see him a little bit more and our campus um, at the same time. So uh, yeah, thanks Jake for being here tonight and for, for doing that video for us. Um, so we're gonna move on. Keeping going here, um, we have Liberty. Liberty is uh, an eighth grader. She's in the class of 2025 um, at TAMS. Um, and Liberty, you're taking uh, science up at the upper school with Mr. Frost in an honors physical science class. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, thank you. Um, so as she said, I am an eighth grader at TAMS and I am taking a high school class and I've always been thankful for that opportunity to advance in that specific um, field and it's always been great because even though I might feel a little behind at times Mr. Frost has always helped me if I get a little confused on a subject or don't remember it from past years or I didn't learn it from other teachers. Um, and it's just a great sense of support at TA and at TAMS. Um, and it's always been like a great honor to be able to attend this school because I know at other schools you don't get so many options. And so, um, yeah. That's awesome. All right, thank you so much, Liberty. Um, that's really great. And then we also have another member of the class of 2025, Evan, another eighth grader at TAMS. Um, so Evan, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what your Thornton Academy experience has been like? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm an eighth grader at TAMS and I take honors physical science at the high school. And I feel like it offers a lot of big advantages. You get to walk around at the high school, even if it's just a few seconds, just walking through the halls, you get a really good environment in the classroom. You get to work at a lot of stuff that other kids don't get to work on and learn a lot. And you know what it's like being a year behind. So you have a lot of advantages going in next year. You can offer a lot of help to other students. And part of it is a challenge, but if you work for it and you study, um, you can succeed a lot. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Evan. That was really great. Um, so that was sort of our presentation. Um, and as uh, Clint said at the beginning, I do want to just just say that you sort of heard this theme here um, throughout the entire presentation that at Thornton Academy, you can be who you are. So we have such a wide variety. You've heard that phrase over and over again. Um, wide variety of classes. And then we haven't talked about some of our other disciplines like arts and humanities, but we've got a wide variety of those classes as well. Um, so you can really be who you are. Um, and find the freedom to like be that person that you, that you are. And then as you know, um, as you heard from Nick and, and Chloe, you can become who you want to be. And the, the foundation classes that we have that will just uh, allow you to, to discover new things while you're in high school and really um, go that extra mile, allow you to become that person who you want to be. And I think we heard from Nick and Chloe also that they didn't even know who they wanted to be. And it was really the classes and the teachers at Thornton Academy that, that allowed them to discover um, some passions that they maybe, maybe didn't even know that they had and now are looking to careers um, that they weren't even really considering before starting with us. Um, so that's you know sort of what you can expect um, from us here here at Thornton Academy. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen at this point um, and we're going to go um, into the question and answer period. So um, there are not any open questions right now, um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat um, or into the Q&A box. Um, but I'm going to go to some of the questions that we had um, that were already that were submitted prior to this webinar. Um, so one of them 
um, is really all about um, this question. I'm just going to read it word for word. It says, wondering what the atmosphere like is at Thornton. Are people excited about learning? Um, is it respectful? Hopefully it's respectful because that's one of our four core values. Um, and is it more chill or hyper? So what is the atmosphere like at Thornton? So um, I'm gonna throw this one to Jake, I think to start with, because Jake, you've been with us here for four years, you're a senior. Um, so, you know, again, it's sort of a little bit of a weird year this year, but on a more normal year, can you tell us what is, what's the, what's the atmosphere like? Are people excited about learning? What's it like, at, what's the atmosphere like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would most definitely say the atmosphere at Thornton Academy is uh, very inviting in both an educational sense and a, a social sense. Um, I was I was new my freshman year to, to Thornton Academy to Saco. Actually, I moved and immediately I was I was welcomed with open arms by both the faculty and uh, the student body. Um, I very quickly found friends through the activities I was interested in, uh, football being one of them. And my classes were, were similar in that respect. I was very excited to attend class every day. I knew I was getting a, a top tier education and I was, uh, I was able to work with my, my peers every day. Um, the classrooms are great, the teachers are great and all around the atmosphere is, is great. I absolutely love it here at Thornton Academy. Wouldn't wanna be anywhere else for my high school career. Awesome. Okay, that sounds really great. Um, does any, anyone else want to comment on that or I think we can kind of kind of move on. Um, okay, awesome. All right, great. So we've got um, a question here about um, sort of individualized learning and college prep approach. Um, so maybe Dan or Terry, maybe one of you guys would want to take a stab at this. Like, how do you do individualized learning within a classroom? Um, and then and then how do you really help to get students ready for uh, moving on to university after that? Well, uh, we're, we're definitely a big school being one of the biggest schools uh, and probably the biggest school in the state. But at the same time, we uh, really focus on, on connections uh, and connections with students. Uh, before, this, uh, before this happened, I was uh, holding up a picture of a, a fly that Nick Bartholomew tied for me. Um, and we really try to make sure that we connect with individual students and, and, and learn who they are as a person, and who they are as learners. Um, so even though we're a big place, uh, we really try to make that extra uh, step to make those connections um, within our classes. And one of the things that I especially deal with at the freshman level is knowing that I've got students coming in from lots of different sending schools. And we understand that we've got a diverse international population as well. So we're constantly tuned into the idea that people have different experiences coming in. Uh, and we make a big effort kind of, I think, early in the year uh, to see where everybody's at uh, and to create experiences in which uh, students can bridge the gap in areas that they haven't seen before, but are still trying to stretch themselves, even if they have seen some of the material. Terry, could you add to that? Yeah, you know, I can't really speak to what other teachers do in their classrooms, but um, for me, having a connection with my students is everything. So much so that I have, um, I don't know, Chloe, did I have a flipped classroom with you? A while ago, I flipped my classroom. And what that means is that I have, um, all of my instruction has been recorded. And students, it's not so much this year because of, of COVID, but in a normal year, students watch my, my lectures as their homework. And then when they come to class, we do a quick recap of what they watch for, uh, for the lecture. And then they start working, doing the stuff that in a traditional classroom they would be doing for homework. And the reason I love this is because while they're working, I actually go and I talk to every single student every single day. So as they're working, I go, my kids work in groups so that they can support each other. And I just go from group to group and I actually watch over their shoulder. I can see what they're doing. Sometimes I'll pull up a chair and sit with a group. And that gives me the ability to see each kid before they take a test, I can see how they're doing, what they understand, what they don't understand, what they're struggling with. And I'm right there to help them. So I, you know, for me, that connection of, of being able to give a student individualized attention is 
is really that's the basis of my of of the way that I teach. One one of the things that I do as far as like when the uh, the first quarter it's kind of for the my freshman honors students it's kind of like honors high school boot camp a little bit um, and uh, some of the uh, the the different things whether it's factor label method or working with some of the more advanced quantitative aspects uh, of science I try to create things like iBooks in which. Um, we, I may not require the whole, the class to work off from every single video that I've got that I've made in there or every single piece of material, but try to make sure it's a it's a uh, a broad overview of the different subjects, so that if somebody hasn't seen something before, that I might be assuming that's that they have, but uh, because they've accelerated being an eighth grader moving into my class or had a different curriculum at their particular middle school, um, that they can then access that information on their own, and I can say, oh, okay, if you haven't seen that, check out this thing right here. If you have, you can move forward to here and try to give them some new options, uh, some different options as well. Awesome. All right, that sounds really great. Um, so we did have one question that wasn't really STEM related, but um, but I think we'll try to answer it. Jake, I know that you said you're in the orchestra. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. I am. I play okay. the violin. All right, great. So we've got uh, someone here that was asking about the music program. Um, apparently the student plays uh, the clarinet. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about what it's like to be a member of the orchestra and what the music program is like. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um... I keep saying all these great things about TA. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with the uh, the arts department, um, music specifically. I've been in the orchestra for four years since I was a freshman. Um, loved it. I've met plenty of great people, very very talented uh, musicians as well. Whether that be in the orchestra or in the band or in the choir, chamber singers, the list goes on. But um, I know in the band it's it's very similar to to orchestra. Um, in a normal school year, you'd, you'd meet up. I think, I know if the orchestra, there are normally two groups um, just because of sheer numbers and classroom sizes. So um, the band might be similar. I cannot attest to that, but I know that there are group practices. You get your music, you'll have, um, you, you, you'll, for us in orchestra, we have like a practice log. So we, we'll go home, we'll bring our music home, we'll practice and we'll, we'll come back every other day and uh, practice as a group with, with our conductor, with our teacher. And then we, uh, we get the privilege to showcase our material and perform. We have performances. Um, normally it's around th a three or four, depending on what we want to do. If we have a pops concert, which is just another type of, of music that we get, but absolutely recommend it. Love my time here. Um, I'm still doing it now remotely. It's a little different, but um, we actually still get to practice somewhat as a group, half in the half in the class, half at home. Um, so it's a cool experience, but um, everyone's been doing a, a great job participating. So I hope that answers. Awesome. That. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Great. Um, so we had another question come through um, that is really about TAMS. So I'm gonna call um, Ryan, um, who is also the vice principal at TAMS. Um, so Ryan, uh, this uh, parent here, I think is looking about um, class size at TAMS and then um, our kids and cohorts for all three years. And so uh, maybe you can talk about the difference between sixth grade and then seventh and eighth grade at TAMS a little bit. Uh, class sizes can vary a little bit, but they're, you know, usually somewhere around 20 to one. Um, I know I have, you know, an eighth grade class of 15 this year, so uh, it can be lower, but it also can be, you know, 22 kids as well, which, which isn't really a bad number whatsoever. Um, as far as the cohorts go, um, they come in sixth grade, they're all mixed up. Seventh grade, they get reshuffled again. Um, and then um, depending on if they're with the small group um, with two teachers, they would have them for seventh and eighth grade. Um, and if they're in the larger group with four uh, teachers, uh, then they get reshuffled again in eighth grade as well. Okay, awesome. And then Evan, um, maybe we can hear a little bit from you. Um, what you talked a little bit about what it's like to be, um, you know, an eighth grader up at the high school, but what's it like? What's the atmosphere like at TAMS? Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be a student at TAMS a little bit? Oh, Evan, I think you're muted. There we go. Okay, there you go. Sorry. 
Um, being at TAMS is great. Um, I love that it's a smaller school because it allows you to really get to know all your peers and students and classmates. Um, it's great to have a real connection with the teachers. You get to know them and they get to know you. And the atmosphere is really good. Um, instead of just walking by the halls, you get to actually talk with your peers and um, become real friends with them. Awesome. All right, cool, thanks. All right, so we're gonna move on to uh, another question here um, that's asking a little bit about, about what um, it's like here with COVID. So uh, Clint, the first part of the question is about boarding students. Are they on campus right now? Um, what's that like? So maybe Clint, you can talk a little bit about what's going on with the boarding students and um, this year. Sure. You know, we're very fortunate that we have the vast majority of our boarders here on campus with us. And, and again, they, they range from a wide variety of countries around the world. Um, they are, they probably have the best uh, social lives in their own bubbles, if you will, in their own dorm bubbles with their, with their friends and, uh, and, and faculty members as well. Uh, just for the record, main, the main CDC has, has given Thornton Academy commendations of how we are keeping our kids safe here on campus and, and providing an excellent opportunity for them. Now, um, we, we are in a hybrid model where, where kids will be studying at home two days a week and then live face-to-face -face the other two days and, and one day where they have some uh, opportunities to get some work done or, or connect directly with faculty or staff uh, virtually. So um, it, it, remind me again, Katie, more specifically, was it about border or just in general, what, what life is like? Um, no, I, think, I think that, I think you, I think you got it. I think that was. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, um, you know, it, it's, it's different. It's not, you know, the, the total experience, but nonetheless, um, I'll reiterate this, you know, the young people that are here on our campus are safe. They have the best social lives of probably any of us at the moment and, you know, are enjoying an excellent opportunity uh, in the class and also uh, in the dorm virtually and have the support of the teachers and staff that live in the dorm as well. So, um, yeah, and Ryan, Ryan Hersey, you're actually a dorm parent. You live in the dorm. Do you have anything you want to add to that? I, I would echo what Clint just said, is the, the kids are having a, a good time here. They're, they're being able to hang out with, you know, the kids in their dorm, uh, which they seem to enjoy. Uh, I think that's a lot more freedom than most. And uh, we're still trying uh, our best to um, come up with activities that they can do that uh, they enjoy, uh, but are also, you know, safe as well. Great. And I'm going to just sort of quickly address the second part of that question, um, which is the in-class instruction in the fall. So Clint mentioned that right now we're doing um, a hybrid model. Um, and so our, our students are in class two days a week and then at home two days a week. This particular week, because it's the week after vacation, we're fully remote, but we are hopefully gonna be going back to the hybrid model next week, um, assuming that we get the green light to do that. Um, and so, you know, I would say in terms of next year, it's too early to say um, what the world is gonna be like in the fall. Um, I don't think anyone really, unfortunately has a crystal ball as to what that's going to be like, but we are doing a hybrid model this year. So assuming um, that, you know, we're in a place where it's safe to have kids on campus, um, that is our goal. Um, but I, I think the administration is going to have some tough decisions ahead, um, trying to figure out what exactly um, the instruction is going to look like next year. So um, like everything else in the world right now, I would say stay tuned uh, and we should hopefully have an answer sometime. I don't even want to say sometime soon, just sometime. So. Um, all right, a quick question that I'm going to just answer myself as well. Equestrian opportunities. Um, we do have an equestrian club. I don't think they're doing any, well, they're not because it's winter. Um, we do have an equestrian club, but we don't have like a, an equestrian program like some other schools do. So the equestrian club is just more of a like interest club um, than like a full equestrian program. Um, okay, great. Um, 
And then English tests, what tests do we have to, to enter? So for the international admissions for students coming from other countries, there are no English tests that are required for admission. If you've already taken an English test, we will accept those results. We do do an online interview as part of the application process, um, but there is no English test that's required. We do test all of our students for English and math when they arrive on campus because um, in addition to all the wide science offerings, we have a lot of math offerings as well. Um, and so we want to make sure you get in the right English class and the right math class. So we'll test you um, on English and math when you arrive on campus. Um, okay, great. And then is it still two people per dorm room even with COVID? Um, Ryan, most of the people, most of the kids are in singles. But some of them are in doubles. Is that right? Some of, some of them are in doubles. Uh, you know, some of them we gave a single at the beginning of the year, and they're like, "I want somebody to dorm with," and so <laughs> they, you know, they found another person, and they they really wanted, you know, that that uh, experience. So um, they moved in with somebody else. So, yeah. um, but again, we we have a good amount um, that are that are single dormed uh, this this year. Yeah. Yeah. And as Clint and Ryan have said, too, we're really, really in close touch. We have a we have a full time residential life nurse um, that lives in one of the dormitories and she and the rest of our nursing staff have been in close contact with the main CDC. Um, and so we've been doing uh, following their guidelines and doing everything to make sure that our students are safe and protected and um, just, you know, as, as, as safe and healthy as they can be. So, um, all right. So I don't see any more questions. I'm going to throw out one final question. Um, to all of our panelists, of which we have many tonight, um, and that is uh, in in like 15 seconds, um, what is your favorite part? Like, what is the best part about being part of the Thornton Academy community? So you don't have to limit yourself to STEM anymore, but like, what's the sort of, what do you think is the best part about being part of the Thornton Academy community? Okay. I'll go so, first. All right, Katie. Clint, great. Clint. All right, and then I'm gonna call on people, but Clint, go for it. You know, I think, number one, the kids want to be here. They want to be involved. They have opportunities to be involved. And when kids are happy, they're working hard. And, and that, that's a great thing. Number two, there's a sense of professionalism. There's a sense of, of care and support that our faculty and staff have uh, within the residential program as well as, as, well as with the, the local program as well. And, and to be a part of those two communities coming together with the synergy of positivity, I think is, is an amazing situation. And anytime you have a, a learning environment or an experiential environment or an academic, you know, you know, academic sport, all those things coming together where people are cohesive and have that synergy to, to work, to enjoy, to respect, to care, it, that's, that's what makes me feel good about being part of Thornton Academy. Awesome. Okay, Chloe, let's jump to you. You've been uh, out of TA for a little bit, but what do you remember? What's the best part about being part of the TA community? Um, I remember spending a lot of time in Mrs. Aaron Sands' classroom. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the teachers, you can tell they really just care and they, you know, they love getting to know you beyond that academic setting. Um, and I think the other thing that I really remember too about Thornton is their willingness to let students succeed and choose paths that they want to. Um, and if something doesn't exist at the school, you can make it exist. One of my favorite things that I did when I was at Thornton was create a pink ribbon club and administration was all for it. Um, you know, they helped us through the steps and it's my understanding that the ribbon club still exists today. So, you know, that was something that for me was really cool because we had this idea and the school was hundred percent behind it and supported it. So I think that that's, you know, that and just being in the community and like remembering pep rallies and all those fun things. So. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll jump to the other end of the spectrum. So Liberty, what do you think you're, you know, what do you, what's the best part about being part of the TA community for you? I think it's the relationships that you can build between your peers and the teachers. You know, if you're having a bad day, when you come onto campus, you're probably not having a bad day by the time you leave it because there's just so much support 
that you can get from every side. So that is really sweet. That's really great. Um, okay, uh, let's jump to Terry Ehrenstam. What do you think? What's the best part about being part of the TA community? Oh, hands down, it's the relationships, the relationships that we make with our students um, and the relationships that we make collegially, you know, with the other staff. Once a Trojan, always a Trojan. I mean, if you are part of the Thornton Academy family, you are part of that family forever. And it's not just in name. I mean, I mean, most people who have graduated from Thornton have a real fondness and a real connection to the school. You know, I, I went to Thornton and um, it, I didn't work there for until 25 years after I left. And in that time, I stayed connected to the school. I was part of the alumni board and it's just, it's a, it's a great, great school. Okay, good. So we're almost out of time. Anyone want to jump in with a, a last reason why they love the Thornton Academy community? Okay. Students okay. that want to learn, teachers yeah. that want to learn, uh, a bunch of really great people that uh, embrace all aspects of science and Maine is a great place to do science as well. Absolutely. And I, you know, as a middle school teacher, uh, our kids have a ton of energy and I, you know, I take great pride in trying to harness that energy and, and, and put it to good use um, and, and they do an excellent job of it. And like Terry said, and several others, uh, you know, working with, um, you know, a, a community uh, of teachers who, who really um, push you to be a better educator uh, and a better teacher um, is what I love about this school. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to all of our panelists. Um, this was a really, really great um, webinar. And I feel like this was exactly what we needed on tonight was a little bit of positivity in the world. So thank you for bringing that to my life and to all of our attendees lives as well. So attendees, um, thank you all for taking the time um, to be with us this evening. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please contact us. You can email admissions at thorntonacademy.org. You can um, visit our website and find out more information. We are doing on-campus um, uh, campus tours um, in a sort of limited fashion, um, and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one virtual call um, if you would like as well. So again, thank you panelists, thank you attendees, um, and we look forward to, to help, hoping that you will join our Thornton Academy community as well. So have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>